it's now 9 a.m. Um, at about well just after seven um, I was getting pains and couldn't sleep couldn't sleep all night I've literally been tossing and turning every sort of hour I can't get comfortable and then um, I went to the toilet and I was like oh I think I think my waters may have just broke and then uh, I stood up and more fluid came out so I was like right okay I think I think my waters might have broke just ignored it went downstairs made a cup of tea I was going to catch up on Towie and then I thought oh no I think that's definitely my waters so I woke Chris up I was like Chris I think uh, my waters are just broken so we're there like googling <laughs> what to do next um, luckily the my bag was packed um, the baby suitcase was pretty much sorted if we haven't got everything we haven't got everything but I rang the hospital thinking that they just tell me to stay at home um, because normally you don't go in do you until your contractions are like closer together or surges as people call them in hypnobirthing um, but they said no you need to come in um, we need to have a look at you so at present I don't know um, if I'll be staying in if it is me going into labour if it's not me going into labour um, one of them was obviously still breached last time we checked um, but we've just been away for the weekend so I'm quite glad that they've uh, hung on in there because <laughs> we had a really nice weekend um, and there was a lot of movement while we were away so who knows maybe he's turned so not sure if, if I am in labour if I'll be able to have him naturally or if it'll be a c-section or whether they'll just send me home no idea no idea so um, me being me I was like oh my hair's greasy I look a mess I, like, I want to have a shower and um, they're all breaking in front of you darling so you might want to break <laughs> don't have a car crash before we get there so I've just had a shower got ready um, and we're on our way to the hospital um, the hospital isn't my local hospital so it is about about half an hour away and um, so hopefully the traffic won't be that bad but I think the kids go back to school today so we'll see but yeah I'll bring you up to speed later how are you feeling Chris fine <laughs> you weren't panicking were you I just think it was a wee you just think it was a wee yeah. <laughs> well it didn't smell like wee so I don't think it's a wee <laughs> it didn't smell of anything and it was clear so yeah anyway this is going into a TMI now so I'll sign off catch you later so that's where I had my IVF three goes and then next door is where you go to the children's centre so first time left now right Need daddy's voice. Yeah, just need daddy's voice. to my channel so I am now a mum of twin boys how did that happen and how am I gonna get through this video without crying um, it's gonna be quite difficult I think <sighs> okay so 
This video is all about my birth story. Um, a few people have asked for it, quite a few people have asked for it, um, so I thought I would share with you exactly what happened. Um, there are some little snippets um, from the morning that my waters broke, so we'll kind of weave them in, um, I'll probably put some other little bits and bobs in, um, and yeah, this just tell the story. So, basically, what happened was we went away for the weekend to Horcross Hall, which you might have seen. So we were very relaxed. Um, my bump was massaged. It was just amazing. It was probably the nicest massage I've ever had. Um, Monday morning, about half seven, I got up to make some breakfast, as I do every morning, because I like to eat really early. And um, I obviously got this running water. And I was like, hmm, I don't think I've wet myself. So that can only mean one thing. It must be my waters. So I thought, well, I'll go and let Chris know. Um, I've got an itchy nose. I'll go and let Chris know um, that I think they've broken. And then we'll ring the hospital and we'll see what the hospital says. So more water was coming out at this point. I, I thought it was going to be like movies. I thought you'd get like this massive gush of water and you'd know instantly that it was your waters. Um, but mine wasn't quite like that. So I rang the hospital, explained what had happened because it's a twin pregnancy, um, you are classed as high risk. So they were like, right, rather than doing some of the labor at home, which a lot of women do, um, you need to come in. And I was like, right, okay. And I thought, well, I've got my hair is a greasy mess. I've been to the spa. Um, I was like, I've got no makeup on. I was like, I'm gonna have a shower. I wanna feel like ready for this. So I had a shower, washed my hair, did my makeup, and then I went. Luckily, I'd already packed all my hospital bags and all of that, so that was fine. Um, at this point, I'm only 35 weeks pregnant, so I honestly believed I'd go to at least 37, but yeah, they had different ideas. So, we got to the hospital, um, I was only getting like mild period pain, it wasn't really, you know, anything major, so I hadn't actually started to go into like full labour or anything like that. Um, when we arrived, the doctor came in and he checked and he said, your waters um, have gone, but they're not fully gone, and your cervix is still closed. So, uh, we're not too worried. What we'll have to do is scan you, see what position twin one is now in, and then decide whether it'll be a natural birth or whether we have to book you for a C-section. So off he goes and he comes back with his little scan and I was sitting there thinking, please, 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 twin one, don't be breech. Um, and he scanned him and he was still breech. <laughs> now they were moving loads at the weekend, so I was really convinced that um, they possibly wouldn't be breech, but twin two was in, but twin one was. So all my hopes of a natural birth um, were slipping away. So I thought, well, okay, you know, I'm here. As long as they're healthy, happy, and everything goes okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna have to deal with the fact that it's a C-section. So he was like, right, we'll perform it on Wednesday, but we will keep you in, because um, we don't want to risk any signs of infection. So uh, Chris and I went off, and we were like, right, well, let's go get some lunch. Um, I got dead excited, because the hospital's massive, and they've got like a huge Costa, they've got a restaurant, they even had a Subway. I was like, oh my God, they've got a Subway. So we only got a Subway salad, and obviously, like, I'd eaten curry the night before, um, a Subway salad, I had jalapenos, chicken tikka, I don't know whether that had anything to do with what I'm gonna tell you about next, but who knows? So we at the Subway, and then we went out into the car park um, to go and grab some um, bits, like hospital bags and stuff like that, because once I knew I was staying over, I needed that. Um, you need to check out my hospital bag video if you're having a baby, because everything that I put in that bag was so helpful. So basically, we uh, walked across the car park, got some stuff out the car, and as I was walking back to the hospital, I was like, <laughs> that really hurt. And I felt like I got like a strong contraction, and I was like, right, okay. Let's keep walking, and the closer and closer I was getting back to the ward that I was put on, which was just like um, a 24 hour ward, just where you just go, um, I started getting worse and worse, and the next minute, oh my God, my contractions came and they did not stop. They went from zero to 100 in about a minute. And he was like, um, and we were trying to time them, but there was no point timing them, because they weren't stopping. They were not stopping, it was constant pain. Had no pain relief, no gas and air, nothing. They were the strongest contractions <laughs> that you could possibly have. And obviously I wanted to do hypnobirthing. So I'm there thinking, right, stay calm Nicola, remember what you learned at your hypnobirthing, breathe and all of this. And I am lying there like, oh my God, this is like, and I think I've got quite a high pain threshold, I've been told that. 
loads of times um but i'm lying there thinking this is really really bad and i was like chris aren't you supposed to be doing something um because in hypnobirth and your partner is meant to like relax you like stroke your arm or blah blah he was like i don't know what to do he was like i, I really don't know what to do and i was like right come on nicola you've got this just like breathe breathe and then i was like oh my god so the next minute the doctor walked in and he pulled back the curtain and he went well that progressed quickly didn't it and i was like you could say that yes yeah you could and he basically quickly checked that the twins were okay and they were dealing with the contractions okay and then he was like right you need to go now i was like go where he's like you need to go for a c-section now i was like huh. Oh my god i was like right okay and at that point you know the contractions obviously they weren't stopping i had no pain relief i was like yeah cool go go for it go for it if he told me i had to go outside naked and run around and do twenty thousand cartwheels to get the baby out i'd have done it i'd have done it i'd have done anything so i was like right fine no problem get me down to the c-section and they were like to chris right you need the baby's vests clothes blah blah Chris like it was meant to happen Wednesday I haven't got any of that it's all in the car she was like and she actually said these words she went you better effing run <laughs> she's going down into surgery now so he legs it off to the car I'm wheeled down to surgery um next minute there's like all these people around me I'm like whoa and, and when I'm in pain I, I just shut down I'll close my eyes I don't want to speak to anyone I don't want to do anything I just want to zone out into my own head um and try and like block out anything that's happening um and they were asking me all these questions and I was just like yeah no yeah no and they must have thought god she's a bit of a moody one um and then the anaesthetist was like right I need to ask you these questions I was like yeah yeah okay yeah I'll just sign it I'll just sign it just let me sign it and she was like right so I was trying to sign it while I was having constant contractions and then um they all put me on this bed and they were like right you need to jump onto the next bed I was like I can't move and they were like right the second you move we'll put the um pain relief into your back so the epidural or whatever um into your back and you'll feel nothing like the whole bottom part of you will go numb and that was something I didn't want I didn't want to feel numb but at that point I was like brilliant fine no problem uh, and I hopped off that bloody bed after I said that I couldn't and then they put it into my back you don't feel that you can't honestly you can't feel it and um, so they put it into my back and then that was it pain gone completely gone and I opened my eyes and I was like a completely different girl and they were like oh you changed and I was like hi no full face of makeup nails all done you know because it was an emergency I didn't have a chance to um to get rid of any makeup or take my nails off or anything like that so next minute Chris comes running in all I saw these like two orange crocs um and yeah crocs and Chris don't really go I was like what are you wearing on your feet and he was just like <laughs> he was like really out of breath because he'd just gone and got all the baby's clothes and then he was like oh my god oh my god they're coming and I think he was um I think he was a bit in shock to be honest and a bit overwhelmed um because we weren't expecting it to go this way which you know everybody says don't bother too much with a birth plan because it will go out the window and i was like yeah yeah whatever the amount of people that must have watched my videos and were laughing going just you wait darling just you wait until you see um but loads of people do do hypnobirthing loads of people can have a really calm lovely natural birth it just wasn't written in the stars for me so the next minute uh we're lying there uh i can feel them tugging around um it's not that bad i was i was so against the c-section um for loads of different reasons um, but it's not that bad and obviously they've got the big light shining down on you and i think you don't look because you might see your own tummy in the reflection so it's just like looking around the room la 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 next minute you hear this wow wow and then you hear another one and you're like oh my god my babies are here so uh they whisk them off into another room and you, you don't get to see them uh so chris ran into the other room went and checked they were okay he was just like oh his face his face actually looked like um when i told him that, I, that it, the IVF had worked and that we were pregnant because um, if you haven't watched my videos before uh, it was our third round of IVF the first two failed and the third one resulted in twins so his face was exactly the same as that and, and he took some photos of the babies for me so while I'm lying there getting that like, stitch back up again he was taking photos of them um, and I was just like oh my god like they've got so much hair uh, that was the first thing I said and then I was stitched up um, wheeled out they were wheeled out with us and we were put onto the lane ward um, to recover. So that was it. They they were here. They were here. They went from coming on Wednesday to coming in half an hour. <laughs> Which, you know, when you think about who their mum is, it's not a surprise really, because I'm really impatient. Like if I want to do something, I'll do it now. I can't wait. I'm like all or nothing. And clearly the boys take after me. 
So they came, they arrived, it was amazing. Um, I tried to breastfeed immediately. Um, obviously it's colostrum at the early stages, so I couldn't I couldn't get them to latch on because they're so young and the way they came into the world, they're a bit distressed. Um, I couldn't get them to actually breastfeed, so we managed to massage the colostrum out and they had that and then we had to bottle feed. Um, which, you know, it's fine, it's cool either way. I'm not one of these like, oh my God, you should only breastfeed or oh my God, don't put pressure on people to breastfeed or la la. Like I'm just neutral. I'm like, do what works for you. Like happy mum, happy baby, you know, whatever. Um, but I personally did want to try and breastfeed. So we were persevering with that bottle feeding um, and then because it was a c-section I had to stay in the ward oh my god like everyone's so nice the nurses are amazing and like and the doctor uh, unbelievable like really liked really liked my doctor but it's the other patients oh, it's just like I had one that was playing her tv with no headphones at like one in the morning watching films and I was just like, there's two sleeping babies here. I'm bloody knackered. And I honestly was going to lose it. And I just said to them, someone needs to say something to her. And then another um, another family were FaceTiming about 12,000 of their relatives. So yeah, that was fun listening to that. Um, another lady, point blank, refused to do anything other than breastfeed. But unfortunately, the baby was having none of it. So the poor baby was screaming pretty much 24-7. So it was it was a challenge. It was a challenge. Um, but yeah, I, I, we just sucked it up. And we were there for two nights. Um, and then we got to take our babies home. And that was the best thing ever. Like seeing Chris walking out. Obviously, one of the reasons, again, I didn't want to see a C-section was because I couldn't be involved in like the carrying of the car seats and all of that. Um, but he was amazing. So for those two days, he did not leave my side. Um, he stayed over in a chair and slept in that. Um, he didn't even have a comfy change of clothes. So men, make sure you take some comfy joggers or something or like pyjamas. Um, poor Chris had to sleep in skinny jeans for two nights. So yeah, he honestly, like he was quite scared to hold, hold a baby because he's never really like done anything with newborns before, held them, changed them, whatever. He was just thrown in at deep end, he had to do it all. So the next day after my C-section, I got up, had a shower, I was walking around. Um, yeah, it's a bit painful, but just get on with it, don't you? Um, thank God someone told me about taking the uh, deflating, which is like a, a wind releasing tablet. Um, you get a lot of trapped wind and constipation and stuff with a C-section from the anaesthetic honestly thank god i had those um and then yeah so i had a shower i felt a bit faint when i had a shower not gonna lie went a bit funny um more to do with temperature change i think than anything else and then got ready put my face on people were coming around they were like you've just had a c-section i was like yeah they were like you look like you've just like <laughs> come from a night out i was like well, that's just me that's just me so i feel better if i look better I just, um, yeah, I don't know why, I just do. So we brought them home and I am now taking like iron. Uh, my back aches a little bit, which I think is to do with the needle going in. And I have to make sure that I do take some pain relief if I need it. But I've been out and about, I've been changing them, um, I've had baths. I am feeding them, we're not getting a lot of sleep, I don't know if you can detect that on my face, um, but yeah we've been out and it's just absolutely incredible. So if you are due um, a baby and you're scared of labour, it'll, it'll happen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen anyway. They've got to come out one way or the other. So I'll just go with the flow. I really would just go with the flow. Um, have your preferences. Have your um, desires all set out. But then if things change and it needs to be switched up, don't stress about it. Just go with it. Um, I have, I think I've put the babies on this video, um, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure I have when they were in hospital, but I might just take you downstairs and show you them how they've settled in at home. So that is my birth story, we have Grayson Reed Ryan who was born uh, five pounds and we have Lawson Nate Ryan who was also five pounds. <laughs> and I'll keep doing updates like they're uh, one week and one day now because I haven't had a chance to film this video yet, but I'll keep doing different updates of them because people just seem to be really interested which is just so nice the support the messages the comments the presence the visits I just honestly we are like and I feel like I'm gonna get emotional now we're like totally blown away um by everybody um that supported us um not just through the pregnancy but through the IVF and everything it's just amazing so if you want to carry on following the Ryan twins then make sure you subscribe to this video uh, give it a quick thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and uh, yeah what'll be or be people say la vie don't even know what that means <laughs> oh
here. I'm, di I'm sleep deprived, like seriously sleep deprived, but I wouldn't change it for the world.